Hello everyone and welcome back to the Cotswold Bees channel. Now in today's fireside chat I thought we'd think about the amazing substance that is honey. It occurred to me the other day, we've done lots of videos on bees and we keep talking about honey but we never actually consider how it's made. And the process of actually turning nectar into honey by the bees is absolutely incredible. It's one of both a chemistry and also mechanics. And so let's have a look at how it's actually done and how proper honey is actually made and it can only be made by bees, and that's really important. That's the legal definition, it has to be made by the insect in order for it to be called honey. So, first of all, where do they find the nectar? Because it's nectar they use to actually make honey. Well, if every bee went out just looking for nectar by itself, some would be successful, some wouldn't. So what they do is they send scout bees out to start with, and the scout bees use the fabulous waggle dance to communicate to all their sisters where the best crops are. And here's a bee doing a waggle dance, and some point in the future we'll actually do a video on the waggle dance because it's incredible. But she's actually telling her sisters where to go to get the best return. Once they know where to go, the bees will fly out to the plants and they'll actually collect the nectar into what we call their honey sack or crop. And they do that by sucking the nectar from the nectaries on the plant using their proboscis. And here you can see one of my bees actually getting ready to actually suck nectar out of a borage plant. And borage is really good for nectar, it produces lots of it and it's easy for the bees to get at it. Once she's done that, she'll actually suck it into her crop and then take it back to the hive. And depending on what flowers she actually collects from will depend on the quality and also the flavour of the honey. So here you see bees on borage and that will produce a very light honey with almost like a lemony kick to it and here you see bees on samphoin and that will produce a completely different flavour, a sort of deeper flavour and some people like the borage better than samphoin, some people like samphoin better than borage and sometimes they'll be feeding on a multitude of flowers and we call it multi-flower honey and it'll just be different every single time. So that's one of the wonders of honey, it really is like wine, fine wine it changes every time, every season, and that's the great joy. So what happens when she's actually collected it into her crop? Well, she can collect somewhere between 40 and 100 milligrams into that crop, and then she'll fly back to the hive with it. While she's flying back to the hive, the chemistry starts. She's going to introduce an enzyme into there called invertase, and that enzyme converts the sugars, inverts them actually, from sucrose to glucose and fructose. There are many other sugars in there, but those are the two principal sugars in honey. And she's also going to introduce at some point another chemical called glucose oxidase. So this is the first part of the chemistry in converting nectar to honey. When she gets back to the hive, she's got to actually pass the honey to one of her sisters. And that'll be one of her younger sisters who's actually working in the factory area converting nectar into honey. And the way she, which she does this is to regurgitate the nectar. And here you can see two bees doing just that. The older bee passing the nectar to the younger bee. And normally this will happen within the hive, but I got a hive in bits and I was actually doing an inspection. And these two bees were passing nectar between themselves. And so I videoed it outside the hive. But normally it'll be inside the hive. Once the younger bee has actually got her supply of nectar, she will then have to convert it into honey. And that's where the mechanical process starts. Nectar is principally water. Anything between 20% at the lower end and maybe 70, as much as 80% at the top end. And if they were just to store that, it would ferment. Now don't get excited. Fermented nectar is not mead. It tastes horrible, the bees can't cope with it, it goes off. So what they've got to do is get that water content down. And they've got it down to around about 17-18%. So what happens is, first of all, she'll put a tiny drop of that nectar into a folded area of her proboscis and expose it to the air. And that starts to evaporate some of the moisture. And she's going to do that several times. Once she's finished doing that, she'll put it into one of the cells and her sisters are going to blow hot air over it. And they'll keep doing that until the water content has dropped to around 17-18%. Once they've got to that level, they then need to seal that honey in. And so they'll produce beeswax, little flakes from glands on either side of their body, they'll chew it and they'll seal the top of the honey. And once they've done that, that honey is sealed in there, 
it will not go off. We know it will last for two, three thousand years. They've taken it out of the tombs of the pharaohs, perfectly edible. The only thing that might happen is it might crystallise within the comb. But that's not honey going off, that's just part of the natural process. So that's how bees make honey. And in a whole life, a bee will only make about a twelfth of a teaspoonful. And here it is next to a five pence piece to give you an idea. We then come along, we harvest what honey we can. We're either going to eat it in a comb, and comb honey we find is absolutely delicious. None of this spinning the honey out stuff. Um, we like our honey natural from the hive. So all I've got to do is spread my toast, take my honey, and take a lovely bit of honey there. There we go. Now what better is that than that? There we have honey straight from the hive. That honey was taken off less than 10 minutes ago, and now I'm gonna have my breakfast. Or alternatively, what we're going to do is spin the honey out and run it into buckets, and then we'll put it into jars when it's ready. And people will spread it on their toast or use it on their breakfast cereals or ice cream or whatever they're gonna do with it straight from the jar. So honey is a truly amazing substance, and that's how it's made. In other videos, we'll look at the other things that bees are going to collect from the wild. So things like pollen, water and propolis and see what they use those for. But at this point, we'll leave it with honey. A wonderful substance, absolutely fantastic and true honey can only be made by bees. There's an awful lot of adulterated honey out there, unfortunately, but actual honey is only made by bees in the way in which I've described. So I hope you enjoyed that. If you have, please give us a thumbs up, maybe even press the bell so you get notified of other videos when we make them, and there's lots on the way. And until next time, enjoy your bees, enjoy your beekeeping, and regrettably there was no cake this time because Carol's not around, so I've had to slum it, but next time I'm sure there'll be cake as well as another video. So thanks again, and see you next time.